Hi, I'm Mercedes from Courage My Love. I'm Phoenix from Courage My Love. I'm Brandon from Courage My Love. And we're hanging out with Rob on Punk Videos Rock. I was really excited when you guys first made the announcement for Warp Tour. I even uh, I did a little blog about it because I've been I've heard about you guys before, but never out here. So I mean, finally we get you guys here. That's so cool. Thanks, dude. Definitely, definitely. So what what's it like being out here in the state, especially for Warp Tour? It's such a big event. Uh, it's awesome. It's our first time being like playing in California, so we're really stoked. And it's our first year on the full tour of Warp Tour, so we're just super stoked to be here and really thankful to be here. Nice. This is definitely like a first, practically a first like tour for you guys, right? Um, so what are you guys learning, you know, as your as each day progresses? Like, what are you guys learning about yourselves or about the band or about you know how to do the next day? Um, I don't know, like we kind of, it's gotten better since the first day. The first day was kind of crazy and hectic and I think as we go we're kind of learning where we need to be and what we need to do every day just to make it all work. But um, yeah, I think kind of what I've learned anyway is just to give yourself downtime and like time to hang with people but also make sure you're where you need to be, you know, when, when you need to be there and just, you know, make everything work. Mm -hmm. No. Wear sunscreen. Yeah, wear Definitely. sunscreen. Yeah. Oh my god. Definitely. Big difference from Canada, right? Oh, yeah. oh my god, you have it's no so idea. Hot. It's, so it's so hot. hot. <laughs> What's been the worst so far for you guys? Uh, Houston. Houston. Yeah, yeah. I first think the day. First day. That was the yeah. first day. It Houston. It was so humid and like. Uh -huh. I, I like the dry heat. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't tell if it's if it's uh, just because it was the first day and we were like shocked mm -hmm. or <laughs> if that actually was like the most humid day. But yeah, it was just like yeah. right out of the gate, just super hot. It was dry crazy. Heat, what he's saying for yeah. sure, dry yeah. heat. Now, yeah. did you guys actually come prepared for the tour? Or do you guys feel like there's a lot of stuff you should have brought? Definitely. I think we were more prepared than we could have been, but there's definitely some stuff we probably should have brought. <laughs> like, what? like maybe some roadies. I don't know. <laughs> but but no, we're good. Like we're cool. We're we're our own roadies right now, so we're just getting super jacked. <laughs> yeah, I know. Seriously. Next tour, you guys are gonna be built. I know. We're like muscly. It's crazy. <laughs> Tan. Super tan. Yeah. <laughs> that, too, that too. Now, technically being like one of the newer bands here on this tour, do you guys feel like you're battling for fans or do you think fans are already picking up on the name quickly? Like it's surprising. Like we had no clue what to expect because um, some of these places we've never even played before and in these markets we've never played before. But I think every day we've just been really surprised at how many fans come out and, you know, come to our merch table or recognize us or at our set, like our crowds are actually pretty decent so um, yeah it's just been a really good surprise and I hope that it continues that way for the whole tour that'd be awesome yeah, I'm sure it's only gonna get bigger and better so oh, thank you yeah like I guess the same thing like I didn't think anyone would really want to watch us but it but I've been pleasantly surprised so yeah. it's good <laughs> so how did, how did this opportunity for Warped Tour happen for you guys well uh, we got a booking agent in the States and we've been playing the Canadian dates of Warped Tour for maybe three years in a row, three or four years in a row. Uh, then we finally got our, our U.S. booking agent and we did our first U.S. tour, which was only the northern states. And I think from that, once we got a bit of buzz going, she just, I don't know how, but she hooked it up. So yeah, that really was a big help. So we're planning on going out after Warp Tour again, just to nice. you know round it off in the fall. Yeah, exactly. Now, why do you guys think uh, fans are picking up on you guys quickly? What is it about the band that you know sticks out to them? Uh, I think YouTube's helped us a lot around here because everyone's like, oh, randomly found you on YouTube, like random link clicks and everything. So mm. I, I don't know what makes us stick out. Like, <laughs> I know we, we rock pretty hard on stage <laughs> for a three piece. I think so. our accents make us stick out because we say out, not. <laughs> oh my God. Literally yesterday, we were at the casino yesterday and everyone, I kept saying, oh, you're going outside? And they're like, I don't know where outside is. I'm going outside. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying really hard to like not sound super Canadian. But <laughs> we make a really big effort also to do at least we will, all together. We do four meet and greets during the day, so we make a big effort to um, meet our fans and actually get to talk to them. Or you know, if they're not a fan before they see us, we want to try and make them a fan after they see us. And not just for that, but it actually really does matter to us that they come out and take the time because there's so many bands yeah. that they could be seeing and they choose to watch our set. It's a big deal. And the fact that they've, you know, that they choose to listen to us when we're not even from here and everything, it's just like we just want to let them know how thankful and excited we are. So I think that goes a long way, just actually remembering someone's name and taking the time to talk to them about who they are and not just about yourself, you know? 
so. I feel like this band has like it's more it's more than music. I think it's more of like trying to spread messages to, to the fans. So I mean, is that what initially started Courage My Love? Um, I get. I mean, I think that starts a lot of bands, not necessarily just our, our band, because like. When you're a musician, you're a creative person, and a lot of the times you just have a lot to say, but the only outlet you have is music, right? So you could either be a writer or, I don't know, like anything, but if you're a musician, that's that's the way you get your message out there. So yeah, for us, it's like we have a lot of things we want to say to people, and we just try and put it in songs, but I don't know. I think it's the same for a lot of bands, though. Okay. Now, you guys are celebrating a year from uh, the EP, right? Yeah, it's already been a year? Yeah. So, I mean... What what has that EP done for you guys? You know, personally as as individuals, and you know, collectively as a band. I it's just been a roller coaster year. You know, like while we were writing the EP, Lockwood joined the band, so that was crazy. We went through a lot of changes, not just as a band, but as individuals too. I mean, before on our first EP, for now. We wrote it before we got signed, we wrote it before we'd ever been on a tour before, and we were just like excited and stoked on life because it was our first time in the studio. And then Becoming, we wrote after we'd gone on a few tours and you know had that experience of saying goodbye to people at home and everything, the ups and the downs of tour. We went through a member change, we, you know, and it's a, a year older, a year wiser too, so I, I just think the... EP is about growing, becoming more mature, and f finding yourself. I, I hear a lot of self-doubt, but also confidence. It's weird, there's like the two sides, and I think that's part of growing up too, and uh, even just being a youth today especially, there's a lot of doubt, but then also self-assurance and reassurance that you find through struggles and stuff. You know, with growing up, obviously the way that you write, the, the lyrics that you want to talk to, or even the fans that you want to talk to, I'm sure that changes. So that being said, I mean, any plans of new music as far as like an actual record now, or can we expect another EP? Like, um, Yeah, I mean, we're never really sure what we're doing. Like, I think right now we're working on doing a full length, but we're just in the writing stage right now. And when we go home, we're probably going to try and lay down some more demos and actually just be, go to the studio and try and work it out more. But yeah, like... I think a full length is definitely coming up because we've only been doing EPs thus far, so it's probably good if we put out something more substantial. Yeah. The, thing with a, with a, the thing with a full length is there's a lot of, because it's, it's really your first uh, debut, your first full length has to be really tight, like really good. And I think after two EPs, not to sound cocky or anything, but I think we're getting ready for it. And especially now the three of us are writing together. We have a lot more to write about than we did before. I just think it's shaping up to be a full work in, pro in the process. Now, you're being the newer member, you know, when you started with, with them, you know, how was it in the studio or writing sessions or even just rehearsals? What was that uh, chemistry like? Um, well, I, f I found that we clicked like instantly and that's kind of how like I, got into the band and it just worked really well and the like writing the bass parts to the songs just like it was just really easy and like we just connected pretty instantly so he was the sorry to, he was the very first bassist that we uh that we just did a kanye i know i'm let you finish he does that all the time <laughs> i do that i'm the worst sorry it's lead singer what syndrome was the question again <laughs> he he uh, he was the very first bassist that we auditioned, and we chose him right away. Like as soon as as soon as the jam was done, we were just like, oh, I don't want to speak for Fe for Phoenix, but I think you're in. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was great. Yeah, and like um, I guess m one of my first shows with them was on breakfast television. So it was like a super early morning. We had to be there at like 5 a.m. It was on TV, and I'm just like it's my first show with the band, and then. Afterwards, I think we got lunch around 11 and then we went to the studio and I recorded bass tracks for like 10 hours yeah. or something to like... like he was traumatized because he remembers the time. Like Finish off the EP. He did was, the whole, all his bass parts in one session. So yeah. it took, I don't know, like a 10 hour day or something. It was crazy. But like, it was good because that was kind of, not like we were still like auditioning him or anything, but it was kind of like a good test and he didn't whine or anything. So it's like, all right, he's, you know... If you can do that, you can pretty much do anything. Like, it's cool. <laughs> Ta-da! Yeah. Well, I mean, you're doing it. You're doing it. <laughs> and uh, for you, Phoenix, um, female drummers, there's not that many out there. Um, I'm sure, you know, you might have been hesitant when you first started as the band and or wanted to do drumming, but what really inspired to be a drummer? I don't, like, honestly, it's really weird because people ask me that, and I it's really stupid, but I don't really remember. Like, I did a lot 
I was in a lot of bands when I was like 14 and I was just always the drummer and I mean I can play piano and I can sing and I can do all this stuff but I, I think I've just always felt like it would be a waste if I wasn't behind the kit. I don't know why, I just I, I feel like that's more what I'm passionate about so I don't know, I'm like self-taught and like I don't know, I've just always felt like that was kind of where my place in the band would be so yeah it's just kind of one of those things where you feel like that's what you're comfortable with and you're good at that so yeah. Well, well I mean I know we're still starting Warp Tour, but you guys did mention plans on being out here in the fall afterwards. Is any of that, you know, released yet or still in the works? <laughs> it's not. It's not really released. Like we're kind of still figuring it out. But I think what we're right now, what the plan is, is to do another tour of the states in the fall at some point, and hopefully hit some of the dates that we hit on Warp Tour. But it'll be like a headline tour, so we'll just see how like what happens and if people show up and all that stuff so one thing you guys have to guarantee though is that you guys hit socal yeah i know we'll hit, we'll hit socal i know i know <laughs> it's so bad we will we're gonna definitely try and hit socal for sure